Okay, perfect. So I called this meeting to order at 4.36 it is now, um, and we'll begin with a territorial acknowledgement. So we respectfully, respectfully acknowledge that the SFSS is located on the traditional unceded territories of the Coast Salish people, including the Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Coquitlam and Katsi nations. Unceded means these territories have never been handed over, sold, or given up by these nations, and we're currently on situated or, and occupied territories. Um, I also just want to give, before I start, uh, just give an acknowledgement of uh, Indigenous Veterans Day. I want to give a trigger warning to uh, colonial violence and genocide against Indigenous people. And so, as many of you know, uh, November 8th was Indigenous Veterans Day. The day was created in Winnipeg in 1994 as Indigenous veterans of the First, Second, and Korean War were largely left out of history and memory surrounding Remembrance Day. This day not only acknowledges the sacrifice of Indigenous peoples, but for the freedom that they fought for, which they were not allowed to share. Further, the day acknowledges the mistreatment of Indigenous people who returned to war to persecution from the state that they fought under. I am going to post some resources uh, about Indigenous involvement in wartime in the chat. Uh, sorry. Maybe. Apologies, it's not letting me paste, I'll do it in a second, but um, as we remember tomorrow, I encourage us all to remember not just the conflicts overseas and the various people who fought in them, uh, but also the state violence within our borders that occurred simultaneously. Um, and give me one second to post these resources. They're definitely not comp uh, like pensive, however, I did have a lot of trouble um, finding resources. For some reason, I can't paste on Zoom. Um, so if anyone, um, has any other resources, feel free to share, and I might just have to email these out after the meeting, because weirdly it's not working. Apologies about that. Um, and we can move into our roll call of attendance, and we'll start with archaeology. Uh, I am present. My name is Damon. My pronouns are he and him, and my access needs are met. All right, thank you, Damon. Uh, I'll move on to Bachelor of Environment. Hi, I'm Tiana. My pronouns are she, her, and all of my access needs are met. All right, thank you. And Behavioral Neuroscience. Arathi. Okay, Biology. Hello everyone, my name is Nick, my pronouns are he and his, and all my access needs have been met. Thank you. Chemistry? Hi everyone, my name is Wen, <clears throat> pronouns are she, her, hers, and all, I'm access, all of my access needs are met. Thank you. Thank you. Cognitive science? Nicole? Okay, Ashran is on a leave of absence. Um, Computing science, Just computing science to have a new counselor at all. Okay. Criminology. Hi, yeah, um, my name is Charlotte. She, her pronouns and all my access needs are met. Thanks, Devin. Thanks. Uh, Data Science Student Union. Warren. Okay. Economics. Okay. Oh, my handwriting does not work. If you just want to put it in the chat, I can read it. I'll come back and read it. Just your name, pronouns, and access needs. Um, education. They let us know they're going to be uh, late. Okay, perfect. Engineering science. Sarah. Okay. English. Hi, my name is Liz. My pronouns are she, they, and all of my access needs are met. Thank you. Environmental science? Hi, my name is Chloe. My pronouns are she, her, and all my access needs are met. Thanks. Thank you. Film Student Union? Amelia? Okay, and just going back to Mahindar, uh, hello everyone. My name is Mahindar Kumar. Pronouns are he, him, his. All my access needs are met. I will fix the mic shortly. Thank you so much. 
and French. Hi, my name is Kylie. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And as for accessibility needs, I will have to be leaving at 8.30. If we run over, I will have to leave at 8.30. But other than that, all my needs are met. Thank you. We'll see if we can set another record for the fastest meeting ever. We'll see what happens. Um, and the next is myself, uh, Gender, Sexuality, and Women's Studies. Uh, hi, everyone. My name's Devin. She, her, hers pronouns. And my access needs are met. Thank you. And geography. Natasha? Okay. Global Asia Student uh, Studies Student Union? Eunice? Health Science? Is Joseph still on a leave of absence? Okay. Let me double check. Okay. Um, history. Alan. Okay. To confirm, uh, yeah, they are still on a leave of oh, absence. Okay. Thank you. Indigenous Studies Student Union. Stephanie. Ayat. Hello, my name is Jeremy Felix. My pronouns are he, him, and they, them. And all my accessibility needs have been met. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, ISSA. Hi, everyone. My name is Deanna Short. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and all my access needs are met. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, labor studies. Hello, my name is Justin Chen. My pronouns are he, him, his, and all my access needs are met. Thank you. Linguistics. Michaela. Okay. Mathematics. Uh, uh, hi, I'm Ben. Pronouns he, him, his. All my access needs are met. Thank you, Ben. Mechatronic system engineering. Hi, my name is Riley McWilliams. Pronoun he, he, him, his, and I'm just on my way home, so I'll keep my mic off. Better than that, my accessibility needs are met. Thank you for letting us know. MBB. Hi, I'm Avneet. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and all my access needs are meant except the usual unstable Wi-Fi. Okay, thank you. Operations research. Ash. Okay. Philosophy. Hi, my name is Tony, he, him, his pronouns, and all my access needs are met. All right, thank you. Uh, physics? Uh, Graham's running a bit late. He told me to just uh, sit in for him until he gets here. Just okay, Shariq. perfect. Do you want to introduce yourself, name, pronouns, access needs? Sure, Shariq, pronouns, he, him, his, and all my access needs have been met. Thank you. All right, thanks, Shariq. Um, political science? Hey, guys, it's Abby. Um, he, him, his pronouns, all my access needs are met, except um, my Wi-Fi is really bad right now. I already got booted out once. Okay, thanks for letting us know. Psychology. Hi, everyone. My name is Tiffany Liu. My pronouns are she, they, and um, my Wi-Fi is also being a little spotty today. All right, thank you. Science Undergrad Society. Zaid. Hey, Society of Arts and Social Science, SAS. Hi, everyone. My name is Aiko. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and all of my access needs are met. Thank you. Thank you. So sociology and anthropology. Kayla. Okay. Software systems. Hello, hello. My name is Shashank Kanalapati. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. All my accessibility needs are met. I just have to leave at eight for another meeting. All Thank right, you. sounds good. Statistics and actual science. Gia. Okay. 
uh, Sustainable Energy Engineering Student Society. Mohammed. Okay, and both Theater Student Union and World Literature sent in their regrets for today's meeting, and so we'll move on uh, to constituency groups and uh, First Nations Students Association, FNSA. Okay, thanks, Aid. Kiana. All right, and she said that they were running late today. And Soka. Right, Linda. No. And is there any representative for the Women's Center Collective here? Not yet. Right. And Sack. Hello, everyone. My name is Paul. Uh, um, pronouns are he and his. All my accessibility needs are met. However, I will have to leave. I don't know if it's just me, but you cut off at the end there. Sorry, I was just saying I have to leave a little bit early for deployment, but I'll have it on in the background. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. And we'll move on to the exec committee and we'll start with the president. Hi, everyone. My name is Gabe Leosis. My pronouns are he, him, his. And my access needs are met other than I might not be here for the entire meeting. Um, I might need to leave early. Um, but my access needs are met otherwise. All right, thanks, Gabe. And I just want to put it in the chat that Muhammad said his mic is dodgy, but name is Muhammad al Shabul. pronouns are he, him, his, and Wi-Fi is being annoyance. So it's my mic, uh, and so is the mic. Lots of Wi-Fi issues today, but thank you. And then VP Internal and Organizational Development. Hi, um, name's Corbett, pronouns are he, him, his, and access needs are met. Awesome, thank you. Uh, and VP Finance and Services. Uh, Almas, uh, VP Finance and Services, she, her, hers pronouns, access needs are met, having a little snack, so typing this here. Thank you. And VP University and Academic Affairs. Hey everyone, my name is Tarina, my pronouns are they, she. Um, and for access needs, my internet's a bit unstable, so I'll just be keeping my camera off for today. All right, thanks, Serena. Um, VP External and Community Affairs. Hey, it's Matt. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. My accessibility needs, um, I will be leaving early today after the stuff that I have put on the agenda is covered. I'm not feeling well, so. All right, I hope you feel better soon. Um, Marie is on a leave of absence, and so VP Events and Student Affairs. Hello, my name is Jess. I pronounce her she, her, hers, and all my access needs are met. Thank you so much, Jess. Um, and society staff, is Aisha here today? Board organi operations organizer. Um, and board organizer. Hi, everyone. This is Ella. Pronouns are she, her, hers, and all of my access needs are met. Awesome, thank you. And campaign research and policy coordinator. No, if I saw BD. Okay, and then our admin assistant. Hi, my name's Christina. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and all my access needs are met. Awesome. And did I forget anyone? If I forgot you, are you filling in for someone? Please raise your hand and I'll call on you. Alrighty, seeing nothing, we'll move into our consent agenda, which has a lot more items on it than usual. And so I'll quickly go over them. Um, Gabe will probably talk more to this, but Gabe said that the reason why a lot of these items are on the consent agenda was uh, that they probably most likely won't be contested. So it's a way to keep them off the Roberts Rules voting uh, way that can sometimes be a little bit time consuming. Uh, but if you do want to bring it into new business, you just have to uh, object to um, when I ask for uh, unanimous consent and we'll move um, that into new business. So just a heads up, but I will go through the items. So we have a couple of minutes as usual from different committees. Uh, we have this ratification of regrets um, from Gabe. Uh, oh, that must be from last week and wasn't removed. 
There was a couple of there was a couple of things that I think there was a slight Robert's Rules error at the last meeting where it wasn't actually announced whether or not the consent agenda was carried or not. Oh, okay. So it just got added again as a administrative. Awesome. Fixing that small error. Okay. Well, Gabe is here today. He's not in Victoria, so. That was my fault last week. And then we have some matters arising from the minutes. Um, so some of the minutes were from last week, and then these ones are from this week. Um, we have the SAS Common Room Memorandum of Understanding, which uh, Corbett just sent out an updated version of that one and the next one, the SUS one, and it's just some typos, nothing changed content-wise. And so those two memorandums of understanding, we got the SFSS patio license agreement, which I do believe that Corbett sent out with the agenda. And then we are uh, have an appointment for the external and community affairs committee. And um, it's to be resolved to approve the appointment of Deanna Short as an external and community affairs committee student at large member. Um, and then be it resolved to approve Kiana uh, James as uh, another student at large member. And so I am seeking unanimous cons or did Gabe, did you have anything else to say on those? No, other than if, um, uh, I just wanna point out that there is a lot more on the consent agenda than usual. And again, because they're mostly just agreements that we've already kind of discussed and talked about and agreed to, that we just kind of need to finalize them. Um, they were added under the consent agenda this because that's the point of the consent agenda is to try and save time on issues that otherwise don't need to be moved and seconded and do the whole blah, blah, blah. So um, uh, yeah, if, 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 if there are any motions under the consent agenda that people wanna have more further discussion on or have any questions about, then the proper procedure is to just say, I would like to move this into new business and um, you would identify which item you'd like to move into new business and then we would do that as, as per usual. And I just want to oh, I mean, no, uh, I just want to acknowledge, uh, Deanna. I know you list yourself. Is it because I forgot to say that you were a member of the committee and you're moving to be an at-large member, or was it something else? I have a question. Can we ask questions during consent agenda? They list themselves. Sure. Okay. Sure. All right, uh, Deanna, go ahead. Okay. Sorry. Um, it just says former counselor on there, but I'm still here. I don't know if that's important. Um, but I just wanted to point that out. It's just in the whereas clause, so it's it's more of just a error than anything. I, I don't think. Okay. Okay. I'll get. It's a big yeah. <laughs> All righty. Does anyone else have any other questions before we move to unanimous consent? Uh, Corbett, go ahead. Yeah, actually, I, I do want to pull out one item for uh, the um, patio. Um, agreement, just because I don't think we've actually had much of a discussion at the council, and so I wanted to give a little bit more background. Sure, so we'll move um, we'll, proper motion for it. Yeah, sure, so we'll move the patio agreement to new business. It'll be 9.2 patio agreement, and we will take that out of the consent agenda. Just to confirm, I don't need a mover or a seconder for that, right? Because there is none on the consent agenda. Perfect. No. All right, does anyone else wanna make any changes before we go into unanimous consent or want to object to unanimous consent? All right, seeking unanimous consent noted that the patio agreement is now in new business, so it's not being passed in the consent agenda. Um, please raise your hand if you'd like to abstain or uh, vote against or move anything. All right, seeing nothing, the consent agenda passes. Um, yay. Um, and we can move on to the adoption of the agenda. Um, so it, be it resolved to adopt the agenda as presented. And I am going to amend that to include regrets. And those regrets are from Kashish Mehta. Um, do, do, do. Devin, Samantha, did you get a did you get a mover and a second for the no I didn't motion? thank you <laughs> um also I just got a message from uh Linda saying uh, representing Soka she her pronouns just finished a lecture I'll be listening on commute home so Wi-Fi might be poor for the next 15 minutes thank you Linda and can I get a mover for the consent uh, adoption of the agenda sorry political science all right thanks Abby can I get a seconder please Matt. 
I heard math. Uh, thank you, Ben. And so I will make my amendment now for. Uh, I, I, for I didn't second. You heard Matt, not Matt. Matt. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's hard to tell when everyone means thanks. Uh, Matt seconds. Thank you. Um, do, do, do. And um, I'm going to <laughs> math promos. And I'm going to move to amend the agenda to uh, include regrets from Kashish Mehta, Samantha Walters, and Sara um, Aritizabal Kasten Abba. No one tell her I butchered her name that bad. Um, and I believe that was all the regrets. So can I get a seconder for that, please? Gabe. Thanks, Gabe. Um, and so any discussion on regrets? Seek unanimous consent. Okay, cool. Um, so those regrets. Oh, there was added. a list from Ben. Yeah, uh, um, the, uh, it's the list, Ben. Is that in regards to the regrets? Sorry, are we considering the amendment to add the regrets now? Yes, but if okay, you want to... That's for the main motion, not for the regrets. Okay, perfect. Uh, all righty. And so we're moving back to the uh, ratification of regrets. And so can I get a, I believe, sorry, Christina, I believe I moved it and I seconded it. I'm sorry, Gabe seconded it, but we can do it again if you need it. Sure, can, um, Christina, go ahead. Um, so the regrets is a separate motion that we're gonna do. Okay, so it's not part of the, it can't be part of the adoption of the agenda. Yeah, so just okay. like, amending the agenda to create a ratification of regrets. Section. That makes sense. Okay, cool. So let's, um, sure. So we can just finish the ratification of regrets. And so can I get a mover for that, please? I think, so you already moved that, Devin, and I seconded it. Yeah. So we're considering the amendment to the main motion now. So we can put this to a vote now. Yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. So we don't need a seconder now. All right. Um, putting that to a vote, seeking unanimous consent on regrets. Seeing none, we'll move back to the adoption of the agenda. And so, Ben, uh, you listed yourself. Yep. Uh, I'd like to amend the agenda to include the following motion at the end of the new business section. Sure. Okay. And so, um, Ben's uh, amendment is, whereas there is one seat available for a non-executive counselor on the oversight committee on executive officers as a result of a recent resignation, be it resolved to point X to the oversight committee of executive officers. And so that will be nine, uh, if it passes, it'll be 9.3. And so, uh, Ben, would you like to move? Yes. And can I get a seconder? Political science. Thank you, Abby. And so seeking unanimous consent, um, if you would like to, moving back to, to add this to the agenda, um, seeking unanimous consent, if you'd like to abstain or vote against, please uh, raise your hand or unmute yourself. All right, seeing nothing, um, that is added as 9.3 uh, oversight appointment. Um, Perfect. And so moving back to the adoption of the agenda, was there any other amendments? Sorry, it was just sent directly to me. So let me read that motion for OCO appointment. Apologies. Uh, oh, no, I already did read it. I'm losing my mind. Um, but I will post it in for everyone if my computer lets me copy and paste. Um, and Corbett, you've listed yourself. Yeah, I'd like to put a discussion item in for um, COVID uh, in, sorry. S of S in, no, get me one second for a title. Um, uh, yeah, S of S in-person event, COVID-19 guidelines. Guidelines already. And can I, Corbett's moving that, can I get a seconder please? Environmental science. All right, thank you, Chloe. Um, so seeking, uh, you, or any discussion on this amendment to the agenda? So, okay, seeking unanimous consent to add this to the agenda, please unmute yourself or raise your hand if you'd like to abstain or vote against. 
Okay, seeing nothing, uh, we move back to the adoption of the agenda. Is there any final um, uh, amendments we need to make before we adopt? All right, seeing nothing, just to be clear, we did um, regrets and then it was the oversight appointment motion and then it was a discussion item uh, for SFS in-person event COVID-19 guidelines. Alrighty, seeking unanimous consent on uh, adopting the agenda. Um, please unmute yourself or raise your hand if you would like to vote against or abstain. And seeing nothing, we adopt the agenda for the day and we'll move into six reports from committees and we will start with 6.1 report from the executive committee. I think we might actually, we need to vote on the motion to ratify regrets from those people first. No, okay, we now we that. move in. Okay, so then yeah. let's, before we move that, we'll ratify, uh, vote to ratify regrets um, from Kashish, Samantha and Sara. Um, so I need a mover and a seconder again. Gabe can move. Okay, uh, who wants a second? Political science. Thank you, and seeking unanimous consent, if there's no discussion on this item, raise your hand. Alrighty, seeing nothing, those ratification of regrets passes, and we can move on to the reports from the committees. Sorry, that got a little bit jumbled up in my brain. Um, so we'll move on to 6.1 report from executive committee. Fantastic. Is someone from the exec sharing the slides? Let me pull it up. Okay, thank you. Oh, so since we had a council meeting last week, we're going to do the one um, this is only relevant to between November 3rd and 10th. Babe? Did you share the slides? Oh, sorry, I didn't see that. My apologies. Um, so we did have an a, a out first report on the last executive committee meeting that we had, um, which was on November 1st, which was actually before the council meeting, uh, the last council meeting, but I don't believe it was reported on. So I'll, I'll give a brief update on that. We did our regular reports where we get report from our management staff. So that includes our board organizer, operations organizer and building manager. Uh, the executive officers all do verbal reports, much like we do here at council. Um, report from the HR and personnel subcommittee, which is a subcommittee of the exec and report from all of our hiring committees that are currently uh, active. Uh, we passed a number of resolutions at that meeting. The first one was to swap some employer representatives on the temporary finance coordinator hiring committee. I was initially on that hiring committee, but asked to be switched with Aisha, which requires executive approval. The exec also passed a motion to support our Bill 22 coalition movement. It's a motion uh, uh, approving our opposition to the proposed changes that the BC Legislative Assembly is, uh, is, is proposing to the Freedom of Information and Pro Protection and Privacy Act. We approved a recommendation to council, uh, which council did uh, approve at the last uh, council meeting to approve the executive uh, SFS as executive co-op uh, member end of understanding. We had a number of discussion items, including the trip that Matt and I at the time were about to go to, to Victoria with SFU, which we'll talk about later. Uh, we had an opportunity to chat about the Burning Mountain Gondola, the plans that we have as the SFSS to engage in some more active act advocacy around the gondola. We chatted about uh, an upcoming climate summit uh, among student societies, the Student Climate Action Initiative, which we'll also have plenty of time to talk about uh, later in the report from the External and Community Affairs Committee. We also chatted about the Rexall flu vaccine clinic, which happened in the Student Union building uh, Mon what day is it? Monday and Tuesday. And we had a number of in-camera discussion items as well. So that was the executive committee meeting on November 1st. I'll move in now to my portfolio on the work I've been doing within uh, my role as president. And I have three minutes, so I'll try and stick to the three. Um, AGM was my 
I also wasn't at the last council meeting, so this is a bit of a, um, a, a, a combination of a number of weeks of work. Uh, I uh, was really involved with uh, annual general meeting planning. I helped run with Corbett two trial runs with all of our staff support and panelists uh, to make sure that we were ready to go, knew what all of our roles were and duties were. Um, so that involved a lot of pre-coordinating with staff, writing the script, and of course I chaired the meeting. Um, nextly, I've been engaging in a lot of uh, Burnaby Mountain Gondola advocacy. I took part in uh, film. Uh, I was part of a video that SFU was doing around the gondola campaign, which has been posted, uh, uh, I believe, on Twitter and maybe Facebook. I don't know about Instagram, but if you've seen it, I'm in there. Um, I presented to Burnaby City Council on Monday night uh, uh, from the undergraduate student perspective on why we need the Burnaby Mountain Gondola. And I also had an opportunity to write an op-ed that got put in the Burnaby Now. In terms of meetings with the university, I was on the search panel for uh, the Senior Director of Campus Public Safety, which is now uh, concluded. I attended the Student Safety Group meeting, which is a, a, a group chaired by the Chief Safety Officer of SFU, Mark Lalonde. Um, which is focused on issues of student safety. We mainly talk about the pandemic there uh, as of late. Um, Serena and I uh, have regular, about two, every two months, we have a check-in with the Director for Student Services at Surrey. So we had a, a meeting with her. Um, and I, yesterday, got to take part in filming for the Welcome Day video for new students who are coming to SFU in spring 2022. Matt and I had a chance to meet with the chairperson of the Alliance of BC Students, as well as their executive director, to talk about uh, climate initiatives that we're engaging as a society and the upcoming climate summit, which, again, we'll have a chance to talk about in a later discussion item. I took part in an interview with CTV Vancouver News around uh, universities' uh, proof of vaccination systems and rapid testing and what that means for the safety of our university community. Speaking of vaccinations, the different kind of vaccination, um, I've been taking part in trying to help uh, the Rexall flu clinic at, uh, 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 take place in the student union building over the last two days. A number of SFSS meetings I've been involved with, executive committee, I attended an ECA committee meeting, governance committee, I was on two hiring committees, temp finance coordinator and the out on campus coordinator. Uh, Devin and I as chair and vice chair of council have bi-weekly check-ins right before council just to prepare for the meeting. And then um, Matt and I both were on a trip to uh, Victoria, and we'll go more into detail on that, but some of the meetings we got to attend during that time were with Katrina Chen, who's our MLA at SFU. We got to see a question period and got a tour of the legislature and also met with the BC Green Party leader. And then my regular staff check-ins thereafter. Corbett, I believe you're up next. Sorry, thank you. Um, so yeah, I, this report is just for basically the last week. It's been a busy week, busier than I expected. Um, so I were finished. I we I was a member. I've been a member of the member services administrative assistant hiring committee. We we recently remet and interviewed a number of uh, students to oh. fill in two new spaces, two two positions for the spring. Um, we just finished it uh, yesterday, so or on Monday. So I'm really happy uh, that is finished. Um, uh, we I was been working the, with um, SAS uh, and SAS to finalize the SAS and SAS MOUs, which has uh, been post, which were part of the part of, the, which were part of the um, consent agenda. So thank you for passing all that. Um, uh, working on some student union grant issues that came up recently as because uh, the amount of um, money requested fell within um, an administrative level for approval. Um, Marie and I uh, met with SFU about the, the SFU Director of Equity and Justice job description, um, gave some feedback, and we will be doing some more uh, in the future. Um, uh, council and exec agenda setting with Gabe. So, you know, we, we meet generally every uh, before each council meeting to set up, uh, or sorry, for the next council meeting to go over the, the agenda and make sure we haven't forgotten anything or if there's any items that need to be submitted, like for, push on the exec side for things like uh, briefing notes or, or other documentation, um, I, which related to me drafting multiple notes of motions for today's council meeting um, and setting it in. Um, 
me and Jess and others met with SFE Sports about their program going forward and what's what's their steps forward for that and what they want from us. Uh, we'll hopefully have something more to come to, back to council about that. I uh, did some check-ins with management um, with Gabe, um, and we've been working and checked in with Aisha around developing our interview matrix, which is related to making our uh, hiring committees more efficient and more and more ob objective. I guess is one way of looking at it. Um, and just been doing a lot of other check-ins and meetings with staff and and other kinds of tasks I've been been working on for quite a while, like like finally getting computer equipment ordered uh, for staff and for our uh, furnishings. Um, and the governance committee met uh, last night and we talked about uh, our annual plan and um, some uh, some new policy recommendations and such, including a notice motion that I believe I submitted to, uh, that's on the agenda now. So thank you. Thomas, I believe you're up next. Um, so this report is only for the week of 3rd November to 10th November because I had um, given another one to, with other executives last week. Um, we had a collective agreement overview that was done by Aisha. Um, there were a couple of things that were discussed here, like the maternity and paternity leave for um, staff members. Earlier, it was usually um, paid out in the end, versus now we will uh, have the option of paying it out um, bi-weekly, I believe. Um, another one was the wage leveling for the coordinators. Um, there's a couple of other things as well that I haven't written here because it would be too long. Um, as Gabe mentioned, there was a flu shot campaign on the 8th of November where about uh, 300 doses were given. This was a collaboration between um, Jess, Serena, Matt, and I. Um, I believe it was also extended to the 9th of November, and we're looking at options to bring this to the Surrey campus, um, given the fact that another flu shot clinic arranged there was um, canceled for some reason. I think Serena has more information about this. On Monday, we did our annual plan review, which was sort of a development session for all of us. We spoke about all the work that we've done so far and the projects that we've taken over, um, the ongoing projects and um, what our plans are for the next six months. Um, we also have discussions about how our capacities are, what support we would need and, um, how this relates to the platform that we ran on during the elections this year. Next up was the issues policies discussion. Um, we have a document where we have all these different policies listed and we usually go um, on checking it if you've done it. And um, I think it's after quite some time that we allocated this once again based on what our portfolios are. And um, since my interest it has always been um, somewhere in the international student area, except my um, portfolio. So I will also be working on that in the future. Um, we had compiled some feedback for the SFU Medical School webinar that took place, I think earlier this month or last month in the very end. Um, some peers that I know from BPK Biology and Health Sciences were also involved in this. So we had sent in this feedback to SFU and we attended the second one um, and um, learned about any information that they had um, and their timeline, which I feel is very delayed. And if they work on this pace, we might never have a medical school. Um, lastly is the WUSC and the F, uh, SFSS scholarship. 
um, there was a meetup with Rachel from SFU um, where we had some Q&As and also discussed about posting of the scholarship on their website and things like that. Um, that's pretty much everything I have for this week. Hey everyone, so for the last week I've been working on the flu shot campaign, which folks have already touched on. The Surrey one was actually initially canceled because um, it wasn't going to be free, So, but apparently they've resolved that, so hopefully there's going to be one on the Surrey campus that is free. Um, the student safety group I had spoken about COVID, um, snow, a bunch of the, I think the flu shot clinics as well, um, and that was basically the overarching view of what we touched on in our last meeting. And we reviewed our annual plans, um, just seeing where we're at, what we need to work on, um, and any areas of collaboration. The collective agreement overview that's already been touched on um, provided a presentation from Aisha. Yeah, I'm not excited for the snow either this year, Devin. Um, institutional Governance Handbook. So the GSS is actually working on this, uh, which I thought was really cool. It would be like a handbook of like how to basically navigate like the Board of Governors and Senate. Hopefully it'll make it easier for <laughs> folks in the future because um, I'm sure any student senators or student representatives of either body can tell you that it's, it's a big learning curve and the current orientation process isn't that effective. Um, currently it's aimed towards graduate students, of course, but um, they've provided me permission to provide feedback and add some sections that tailor it to undergrad students. So <laughs> yeah, Abby, for sure. Um, so I'm hoping that it'll be really useful so people ahead of us can have an easier time. Um, Senate, so the SCOOS, I thought this might be an interesting update. They're working on the research for the grading scheme. If you all remember that petition about um, like percentages on transcripts and that kind of thing, the registrar is working on that. And hopefully um, at the next meeting, they'll present their research and we can decide on a like step forward of how to move forward with the grading scheme, what possible changes we can provide to the larger Senate to vote on. And then um, Anita, who is a student, is also working on a youth and care program. Um, so a youth and care campaign rather um, for a tuition waiver for youth and care. Basically, if they've been in the system, they would have their tuition wavered. Um, apparently something similar already exists. So that's what I've heard recently. So I've just been helping them out working on that. Um, and I think that's about it for me. And of course, if you need to reach me, feel free to do so. Hello. All right, cool. Sorry, my mic was being weird. Okay, so I can go over what is in my annual plan. I will start with um, committee work. So the ECAC, so External Community Affairs Committee has actually been pretty busy. Um, technically, I'm on leave, like as of right now, but still keeping up with like committee work that has been done and stuff kind of got pushed last week because me and Gabriel and Victoria, but they had their first development session. Um, and we've also been working on the provincial budget. So as we know the provincial budget, um, there has been a couple areas and like what we know or what will also kind of go into where our lobbying will go forward to this year. So we'll be working on that. There is um, a specific day, when is it? I think it's on the 15th, so next week. We will have our staff going there. Um, what is it? Oh, it is on the, okay, yeah. So the legislation, legislative assembly session um, and the report is being tabled on the 15th so we'll have um, our staff attending online and then coming back to bring a report and from there the ECAC will be reviewing this report and then we'll be able to kind of this will help prep like our stuff for spring lobby days. A couple other things that we're doing um, I'm finally I'm still working on our annual plan to what we need to work on in terms of lobbying efforts and also campaigns that we've done. Um, 
So yeah, and also for myself, I've kind of cleaned up my own annual plan and moved it on to um, Notion. So if you have any questions, I can go through that with you if you have any questions about my own annual plan, but that's also what I've been working on. Just have some realistic goals in terms of like what I want to finish for this semester and also spring. Um, I met with Burnaby Mayor Mike Hurley. Uh, we had a quick phone call just talking about um, working with, um, I guess the city of Burnaby and seeing where like I could sit on some of their Burnaby city council committees. So hopefully that um, I can have more updates when that happens. Um, submitted a motion for the SFSS executive for our bill 22 um, coalition. So basically what happened is that the BC NDP government wanted to make amendments to the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. And this would actually be really harmful just in terms, there was a lot of stuff that they were changing and adding um, actually fees um, for folks who will be asking for like requests for certain information and stuff like that. So um, I can also go over that in more detail if folks have questions about it, but the SFSS executive has signed on to support the coalition because it impacts like journalism um, and other folks as well. Um, yeah, so I was helping support like the annual general meeting through our comms material, kind of going through postering. I went poster on campus. I was going to the back end and collecting some of the videos from counselors and execs, kind of going out uh, with the digital comms part of that. Um, I'm also on, currently on the search committee for the new Indigenous, um, I guess the ISD, so the ISC director. I'm on that search committee right now. It's been pretty frequent. Um, as you all know, me and Gabe went to um, Victoria. I've also been working with um, myself, Serena, our comms department, um, and our staff, and also Tara, who is from uh, SFU this Engagement, who is kind of working on like the SFU Community Fridge Project, which is housed on the first floor of the sub. So I wanted to get out some collective comms material between us, um, Tara's um, department and then also Embark Sustainability. So we'll have like frequent comms material and we're proposing a launch date hopefully soon. So look out for that. I've also been working on getting uh, folks from the SFSS to the Student Climate Action Initiative. So this has been something that's actually been taking up like a lot of time just reaching out to people. We had to send in like our letterhead with folks um, who are going there. And then I'm actually getting some of our staff to support in compiling a report. Um, that we will bring there so that we can kind of let folks know what we've been doing and what's already been done on our end. And I just wanted to make a note at the bottom, um, if folks are interested, council members or membership at all, um, I can go over some things that like I already have done or I also have a whole document that I've been working on this year that has all my motions, discussion items and things that I've submitted for committees. If you want to see that as well, I have, um, I'm trying to make sure that all my stuff is in one spot. So if you ever have any questions about specifically what I'm working on or anything that you see, um, please feel free to let me know and reach out. Hello everyone. Um, so from the date from November 3rd to 10th, um, I've been working with Corbett and Nancy to discuss esports and their future at SFU as an association, so as a club itself, and then working with folks from SFU Ancillary Services, um, if SFU esports can ever get competitive. So if you're interested in that, um, stay tuned. And I worked with some folks for the flu shot campaign, and I'm so happy that it was successful for the two days that we had it. I chaired a member services and advisory committee and events and student affairs committee as well. In the meantime, um, there are some seats open still for both. So if you are interested, please send me an email and then we'll see if the time works out for you. Um, I just need a little bit more hands on deck for events and MSA. So that'd be very helpful. And I'm still working with Samaya and Aisha in collecting the information and buying the materials for the staff name tags. And I had a check-in with Serena and Matt um, to see what projects we're working on together where we can collaborate. And we also went over our annual plan overview. We have six months left in this term 
And so we were just looking at where we needed support, what is realistic, to be honest, um, with the time that we have left and with our capacities and where we can collaborate. Um, and upcoming events and programming are one with SFP Recreation. So we'll be at the fire pits in around two weeks time from now, giving out little hot chocolate goodie bags. Um, it's gonna be really cold, so come by. And then on the 19th of next week, I am working with Constantine from out on campus and Trish, our student advocacy coordinator to host a vigil for Trans Day of Remembrance. And today I met with some non-executive counselors to work on your counselor jackets. Um, and then um, having updates with room bookings um, from Shelly and Corbett on that. And that is it. Awesome. Thank you, execs. Does anyone have any questions before we move on? All righty. Seeing none, we'll move on to 6.2 report from External Community Affairs Committee. Um, okay, cool. Uh, just give me two seconds to pull up my notes and then I should be good to go. This shouldn't take too long. Um, Okay, cool. All right, so I can kind of go over and Gabe could kind of hop in like when we um, went on this trip. So we were gone from Tuesday, which uh, started off with a very um, distressing flight. <laughs> we took this flight and we went to Victoria, we took Harbor Air. It was bad turbulence. So if you don't like little planes, don't go on little planes. But anyway, we were able to get support from our staff because there was uh, one part of it was that we would be kind of talking about the gondola um, in terms of like working with SFU to kind of present this in a way like when we were going to uh, meet with Katrina. So um, Ella and also Muriel and BD got us a really awesome report kind of going over like the whole case of like the gondola and why it's important for students and things like that so we kind of spent the night prepping when we got there um and then on the second day was pretty packed uh that was the wednesday that we weren't able to attend so we had a pretty early morning um which started kind of as well kind of going over talking points and then we met with um justin who works in government relations sfu department and they took us over to the legislature building and our first thing of the day was having, uh, we had lunch like with uh, Katrina Chen, which Gabe mentioned is uh, Burnaby Lougheed MLA. So we met with Katrina um, and I believe it was for like around an hour she stayed. Um, and that was actually like, I think a half hour longer than she in, like was supposed to actually. So it was really good. We kind of discussed a lot of things in terms of like what has been happening since like we last seen Katrina talking about the gondola, having speaking points around what what I guess as a society and like in our roles like what we're looking for in terms of support so I believe I brought up um you know and keep in mind that like this isn't like a formal meeting like we don't have like our stuff out we're just kind of like discussing and things are coming up but just in terms of like I did bring up like student affordability and more services like within the Burnaby area for like you know to I guess support like in terms of housing um you know more services around like where's accessible like mental wellness supports for students and then also um yeah like things combating like food security for students so we're kind of talking about that with her and then Gabe do you want to hop in um what else we discussed with Katrina I think you covered it mostly mm -hmm. yeah yeah so I remember Gabe was talking about like the gondola um just in regards to like what how we see that this is kind of like our last kind of like chance to kind of advocate and really push it before the new year um, because they do need a lot of Burnaby City Council support on it and just kind of where where do we in what areas can like she support um, being like our MLA in this area and then what we're continuing to do like for students and kind of explaining and giving more context to like 
why we see this um, project as something that will really benefit students. One, like just in general, um, there's a word you used, game, but I don't really remember it. Just like creating like a better like experience, like overall. Um, improving the quality of life. For yeah, students. improving the quality yeah. of life. Yeah, for like, you know, transit and then also just experience and then also kind of discussing, um, you know, Oh, we're also kind of, I don't remember this came up, but just still in opposition to like the expansion of the tank farms and things like that, we also brought up that this is happening um, and that we're still working on uh, supporting pieces around sustainability and looking for climate justice and climate action and that our stances like haven't changed if anything comes up that we'll be asking for support on that. So that's that piece with Katrina. After that, we went to... We did it. Oh, what's a question period after that? Um, so that was around 40 minutes. So we were there for a bit. And Katrina gave us a shout out in the legislature. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was crazy. Um, definitely. Yeah, it was definitely different. I've never experienced that. So, <laughs> and Yeah, it's very weird. I don't know if anyone has actually been in like a legislature building or like parliament while they're in session. But it's very weird. I'll say that. <laughs> That's my first time. So, the, um, the so after that, I believe our our second meeting was with Anne King. So um, she's the minister of advanced education right now, and so we met with um, Anne King. There's a couple of random like MLAs from like there was some guy from Langley. I don't know. Anyway, mm -hmm. which the elementary right? secretary. Okay, yeah. And then uh, um, Joy was there, Joanne Curry, uh, Nicole Rogers. Um, and then we were also there. And then so there was a lot of talking points that just kind of came up around. Um, so I guess the important key piece around this conversation that is relevant to share right now is that the NDP government, like they, have, they promised or have been talking about like more like funding for post-secondaries in terms of like grants and stuff like that, like operating grants and like what's going to happen. So in terms of that, that kind of puts us in the position that we need to keep in mind that, you know, the university is one looking to get hold of these grants and to improve a lot of things that happen like within the university, like as of right now, um, there's just like a review, the review of all this is happening as well. And from my knowledge uh, and what was stated in that meeting, this hasn't happened for around 20 years. So it's actually really important because this could really impact the ways in which like we see, it could really impact student affordability um, because one, this will put, so if you think about it like this, um, the university runs one on students tuition, which is very high right now, and then also runs on some funding from the government. Um, the funding from the government like hasn't been increased or it stayed the same for like so many years and the prices of like everything else have increased. So that means right now um, the university, they're increasing tuition because that's what they're relying on right now to actually get a lot of their services and things out. So they're relying heavily on student tuition. Um, so one thing um, just to keep in mind that with this review and with this ask, um, Ann King actually wanted us to write um, to how that they wanna see student involvement in this um, review. So that's one key piece. And then also to make sure that we're just included in these conversations like with the university, like ongoing. So that's really crucial, especially for like lobbying points of how we want this to go um, for the next year, because I think this will really impact student involvement, but also could really it just really has the potential to see how we see funding go towards university. And in the end, all these things kind of trickle down to us and like where our money goes and how we pay for our education and all that. So when I get more information on that and when that starts happening, I'll bring another update. Um, so, and then the last meeting of the day, we met with um, Green Party leader um, in BC, uh, Sonia first to know. Uh, she was here for... Um, a panel or something a few weeks ago. And so it was um, Sonia, a couple of folks from her team, us, um, 
Joy, Joanne, Nicole, and then Dugan. I don't know Dugan's last name. Dugan O'Neill. Yeah. Uh, so he was there. And we just, this was, seemed like more of an introductory meeting. Um, I wasn't um, sure of the intent like right away, but we went in there, it just seemed very introductory just because um, folks haven't met before, haven't had those conversations. So it was more so just like, what is SFU doing? What is happening? Um, the news about the uh, divestment came out as well. Like just uh, people were talking about that a bit. Um, and then so Sonia was asking like in terms of like the position of like the society and what we do um, and just kind of some initiatives in terms of like what our stances are currently and around that. So that was pretty brief. Uh, not too much out of that, but she is always wanting to go talk to like universities and like students and stuff like that. So it might be good, um, good point of contact if I invited her to come talk to like the ECA committee or something like that, or even to council. So I think that is, uh, yeah, so that was kind of our day. Um, and then the next day we kind of flew out and had to go on that tiny little plane. So... <laughs> We are back by noon. It was pretty quick, but I think we got a lot done, and there's a lot of things that we can that we're going to be working on after this that I think will really help. So, yeah, that is report one, unless Gabe has anything to add for that. Uh, I don't think I have anything to add in terms of what actually happened on the meetings, but these meetings are very um, important, even though sometimes you come out of these meetings asking like, okay, what did we actually get out of these? Um, which often happens when you meet with politicians, but I do feel like the meetings we had were very productive. Um, I had personally met Sonia first, you know, before, so I, we were both kind of familiar with each other. Um, it was nice to see her again and build that connection. Um, the meeting with Ann King was definitely very productive and we have an opportunity here to, to uh, give a lot of advice and in, we have a lot of influence here on how this post-secondary funding review can look like and how we wanna to recommend to the ministry uh, what student consultation can look like. And so that's, that's a really important piece that um, uh, uh, I, I think we really have to cling on to and latch to it at this moment in time because we have an opportunity here to really influence how that looks like. Um, but overall, I'm just happy that, um, you know, it's, it's no secret that we don't agree with the, uh, with the bulk of the decisions that the university makes. But it's a good it's a good opportunity when they invite us on trips like this, so we can actually, you know, it's not often that we get to sit across the table from the Minister of Advanced Education, and so these types of trips are really important, and they're not trips that we really got to engage in last year, especially because of COVID nineteen. Um, so it was a really fun experience, really good experience, really productive experience, and happy I went. Hope we can go on more. Yes. I hope that um, yeah, there's more opportunity, especially if there's something like, you know, and I think it'll kind of tie into like what I'm be talking about next, but just to add quickly onto that, like, I think it's really important to at least have um, one experience, like having conversations like that, especially with folks who are willing to like support you in some way or folks, um, especially in, um, I guess the government on any level, folks who work for you ultimately and like need to hear like what you have to say so it's just a good opportunity to be able to share like actually like firsthand like what you know what we're trying to work on um as a society and bringing up student concerns because sometimes they don't really get to hear that too often so yeah it was a good experience and if we hear anything in the spring um i'll definitely be recommending um folks from like ecac to go so yeah that is the first report all right. Um, the second one is the Student Climate Action Initiative. So this is actually really, um, really important and exciting. So pretty much a few weeks ago, the week before me and Gabe went to, um, to Victoria, and that was the week of the AGM, um, we met with Ariana Chartrand, who is the chair of the Alliance of BC Students, but also um, basically what my role is here as external um, at Capilano University. So she came um, and had a meeting with us on that Monday. 
to discuss what Alliance of BC students. So basically like Alliance of BC students is just like a bunch of other student unions who are all under um, the Alliance basically. So just to kind of explain that. And then, so they're having um, a conference or a summit at the end of the month um, in strictly regards to like climate action. Um, so what is happening there is she reached out and she wanted to kind of talk about what the SFSS has been doing um, in regards to addressing like climate action and climate justice, uh, supporting sustainability initiatives. So I feel like in the last couple of years, like we have done a lot, like we have done so many campaigns in terms of like, we've updated our issues policies to include that. Um, the, the divestment, um, like bylaw that came through at the AGM was really important. We've done so many campaigns for like students against TMX, taking an opposition for like tank farms and just currently working on ensuring that we're supporting organizations like SFU 350, but also like amplifying stuff that's happening like within Embark Sustainability and collaborating with folks who are actually doing like grassroots um, work within the university. So I think, wait, someone is on you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of that, um, the Student Climate Action Initiative has been presented, and this is like one of the first conferences that is coming up that we've actually been able to be invited to. So basically what happened is Ariana invited us, and from there I based it off of, um, I guess, like recommendations of folks that like I'm seeing like in community, but also who would be good to go to this um, community because it is in person. So there is limited seats. And that was like the issue. Um, I'm hoping in the future, if there is more that is relevant for like councils and stuff like that to bring them out. So pretty much for this, we've been able to, um, I can list off some folks. So um, I know some folks from like my committee is going, like Chloe is going, she's also the environment rep. So that makes sense to go, especially as a member of council. Um, myself, um, Gabe, most of the execs, some people are also attending online. So if you want to attend online, we still have four seats open to go online. But as in terms of like in-person seats, there was only five. Um, and then so SFU 350, they have some of their folks going, but they're signing on as their own um, org but I just invited them under the letterhead that I submitted. And then also um, the chair from Embark Sustainability, so Zoya is also attending. So those three, a couple of things that I think were really important about this, um, the whole idea behind this summit is to get student unions and organizations who are working on similar things because what they've found is like at SFU, we've been doing our own work internally within the university. Then also in UBC, they're also doing their own work. And then some folks even like at TRU and Kamloops or like CAPU, they're all doing their initiatives internally, but there's no space collectively where all student unions are working on, like, I guess how to explain like one big ask or like, what are we all doing collectively? So they're trying to create a space where we can all work on something collectively that we all sign on to. Um, that we can either lobby or bring forward and bring back to our student societies that we could sign off on to. So my plan for this is because I honestly believe that the SFSS has been a really big leader in what we've been doing. And a lot of student societies, even that, if we don't even notice it, a lot of student societies and a lot of folks who are like either on councils or in exec roles or other places are looking at what we're doing. Um, they see what we're doing, they hear about our AGMs, they hear about stuff that was happening with, um, you know, the SFU 350, like, you know, people heard about that and they wanted to reach out and say, like, what can we do? And they actually come and ask folks like Marie and like past um, board members who are now on like SFU 350, like working um, just in terms of like community. And I think it's just really important that we continue to, one, share our knowledge, like how we do this. And I think it's really important to go to these things to share, like, you know, how did we get that, like, you know, bylaw change for divestment because some folks might not know how to do that or how do we like, you know, make sure that we're supporting like other community grassroots projects by like actually supplying funds. So like funds came from um, 
external and community affairs committee to pay honorarias for folks who were coming up like those things are really essential even though they seem small especially with climate action work and i also thought it was important to prioritize the folks who are actually doing the work to be there um, so that they can share um, also what they've been doing another thing from this we will be having like a report that we do bring to this um, summit with all of our current stances and work that we've already done so that we can bring it to folks to share. And then hopefully um, it'll either give people like ideas of what they can do or we can add to this as well. And it just kind of adds to the discussion about like overall what we want to see for climate action and climate justice um, amongst like student societies and in university. So um, those are my two reports. If anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And like I said, we still have some seats for online. Um, but if there is any other conferences or anything that I see that might be suitable for like counselors, like I'll reach out to you and I'll also share it. So just keep me posted. And yeah, that's kind of all that I have. All right, thank you, Math, um, for that report. Um, does anyone have any like direct questions before we move into in camera? All right, seeing none, we can move into in-camera, and Ella is nice, we're going to create a waiting room for us all to go into, uh, but first, I we need to move to go into in-camera, so be it resolved to go in-camera for the remainder of the meeting. Can I get a mover, please? Political science. Thank you. Can I get a seconder? Matt. All right, thank you, Matt. Alrighty, and so just hold tight as we go into a uh, breakout room so we can go in camera. Wait, Ella, were you making that or did you want me to make it? Uh, I'm making it right now. Oh, thank you very much. And sorry, I forgot to do seeking unanimous consent. We need to vote. So see you now, it's kind of to go into camera if you want to raise your hand or unmute yourself if you uh, want to abstain or vote against. And seeing nothing moving into camera passes. All right. Thank you, thank you. We'll just wait for the room to close because I think there are some still and some individuals there. Perfect. That looks like almost everyone back. So uh, we'll move to eight on the agenda, which is the be it resolved to go X camera. And can I get a mover for that, please? Political science. Thank you, Abby. Can I get a seconder, please? Math. Thank you very much. Was that, that was math this time, right? That was math this time. Okay, math. great. It's going to haunt me in my dreams. Um, alrighty. And so seeking unanimous consent to go X camera. Um, please raise your hand or unmute yourself if you would like to stay in camera or if you'd like to abstain. All right, seeing nothing that passes and we are officially ex camera. And so question for everyone, would you rather have a break now or get through new business and then have a break? How are we feeling? After new business? Break. I'm indifferent. Oh my gosh. Um, after okay let's do <laughs> let's do after because that's what I'm hearing um and so we'll continue on and we'll move to new business and so the first is 9.1 staff compensation motion and this was submitted by Gabe and it reads be it resolved that council approve the recommendations within the confidential briefing note titled recommendations to council staff compensation um and so we're not allowed to talk about it anymore um but I guess um, can I get a mover for that motion? Gabe. Can I get a seconder, please? Math. Thank you very much, Math. Um, all right, any discussion on this item that is not breaking our in-camera rules? And yes, it does feel like it's after night. It's because it gets so dark so fast now after daylight savings. <laughs> all righty, any discussion? Alrighty, um, seeing nothing, we'll move to a vote. So I'm seeking unanimous consent. If you'd like to vote against or abstain, please unmute yourself or raise your hand. All right, seeing nothing, this passes. Thank you, everyone. 
And we'll move on to our second item of new business, which is the patio agreement. And this was moved out of the, um, it was moved out of the consent agenda by Corbett. And I will do, do, do said. And I will read it here. So it's be it resolved that council approve and file the SFSS patio license final agreement. This was submitted by Corbett. And so Corbett, would you like to move? I move. Thank you. Can I get a seconder, please? Matt. All right. Thanks, Matt. Um, and uh, Corbett, would you like to speak to this motion as the author and mover? Yeah. Um, the John. So, yeah. Thank you, everyone. So, um, John Walsh, our building manager, has been going back and forth with SFU for quite a while related to uh, stuff around our student union building, things like um, our square footage space that we get charged for, what they have control over and such. Um, and so one of those things also that came into uh, issue relatively recently was um, with uh, Blends Coffee Shop. Um, we had, during the, the construction design and stuff of this building, um, there have been kind of uh, unofficial uh, um, uh, mentions of giving uh, having blends have patio space outside their space their building, so they have chairs and, and umbrellas and things like that. Um, however, according to the actual letter of the, the our rules um, in our our what's it called um, our space agreement. Oh, sorry, our lease with SFU. That's not actually a thing, um, and so we went to SFU to say we'd like some specific patio space um, for, and they went back and forth on what is what is allowable for like furniture and stuff outside, how much space it would be at, and uh, this is the agreement that came back. Um, and it's a it's like 26 pages, some of it's a lot of legalese, some of it comes off as much legalese, but for the most part, it's just um, basically allowing for blends to have some seats outside. Um, so it's, this is kind of, uh, I wanted to just have a quick discussion on this, um, so that people, so one for our minutes and records and, and that's, you know, we, if people had some questions about it. We can, uh, I can do my best to answer. Also, yeah, and John did submit a briefing note ahead of time, a bit of a background for council. And John is here also if you, to answer questions. Um, so because he, he's one mostly been, he's been the main uh, source for the, the, the good thing going back and forth. And so he'd have the best um, feedback to give if you have a, or best, he can answer your questions better than I could. So, okay, thank you. All righty, thank you, Corbett. Does anyone have any questions or comments on this patio agreement? Please list yourself. No one wants to write this interesting. <laughs> Ask any questions. All right, I'm not seeing anything or any, oh, discussion. Uh, just said that they asked their questions to John via email because I was confused, but he got back to me. Thank you, Jeff. Anyone else have any questions? So just to clarify, in case I am confused, because there's lots of legal jargon in that agreement, um, we are allowing blends to basically put chairs and stuff on the patio and have space for students to have coffee. Yeah, so I can talk about Devin if you'd like. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Um, so effectively what this is, is it's a very specific license agreement that actually outlines the use of the space as well. So the only use of this particular space, it's only about 200 square feet. It's actually a very small space, is to put tables and chairs. And then we're allowed three umbrellas on top of them to be used as a patio for a cafe. So the way that this will actually work is um, just with all the contractual kind of side of things is the space actually has to be licensed to the student society by the university, but then they've also given permission to sub-license the space to blends. So the requirements that you see in this document, we will mimic them 
um, and we will only give blends a 12 month agreement to give the society wiggle room in case there was any issues down the line with how it was being operated or anything that comes up with the university as well. So this is solely just for patio space attached to a cafe. All right, thank you so much for that clarification. Uh, last call for any questions or clarifications regarding the patio agreement. All right, seeing nothing, we'll move to a vote. Uh, so seeking unanimous consent, because I don't think this is gonna be contested. Uh, please unmute yourself if you'd like to abstain or, um, or vote against. All right, seeing nothing, this passes. And so um, just to read again, um, be it resolved that council approve and file the SFSS patio license file agreement. And so we have approved and we will file it. Um, thank you so much. And thank you, John, for being here today. And we will move on to the motion added regarding oversight and this was added by Ben and it reads, whereas there is one seat available for a non-executive counselor on the oversight committee on executive officers as a result of a recent resignation, be it resolved to appoint X to the oversight committee on executive officers. Perfect, okay. Um, and so Ben, do you wanna to speak to this before we move into appointing someone? Uh, yeah, it was basically the motion I was going to bring. Oh, yes. Yes, a move in a second. Sorry, I'm getting uh, too excited. Can I get a move? move. Oh, ben, would you like to move? Uh, yes, I'll move. Okay, sounds good. Can I get a seconder, please? Political Perfect. science. Okay, I heard political science first. Um, and sorry, Ben, go back to explaining, uh, putting this on. Uh, yeah, it was basically the same ish thing or the be it resolved clause will, would have been the same as I would have brought next week with the notice of motion to change the policy but due to someone's resignation from the committee I felt it would be fine to bring such a motion today. Yeah that makes sense to me just to confirm we have filed and received that resignation Corbett and Gabe. Okay cool and so I guess we can move on to, um, what is it called? Appointments or um, the word is escaping my mind, but when you ask, tell someone, approve, like put forth, please someone, what's the word? <laughs> uh, appointments to the committee. So if you'd like- Nominations. Nominations, there we go. If you'd like to nominate yourself or someone else, please list yourself in the chat. And we have two lists and Ben, you listed first, so go ahead. Uh, I'll nominate myself. Okay, and uh, Chloe, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna nominate myself as well. Okay, so that's two people who would like to nominate themselves for a spot on the OCEO committee. And so is, I'll go to second call for nominations. Okay, third call for nominations. Okay, seeing no other calls, we have uh, both Ben and Chloe interested in the position, and so we are gonna move to a vote on them. But I'll give Ben and Chloe each about like 30 seconds to a minute to explain why they would like to be part of the Oversight Committee on Executive Officers. You gotta hang out with me. Uh, ben, I'll let you go first. Yeah, so I, didn't prepare much of a speech as this was brought kind of rushed, but uh, I've attended a few meetings of the committee just as a member of council and I've felt it to be quite an interesting committee and seeing as council reps should or must be on a committee to avoid a stipend reduction, I'd like to be on this committee as a voting member in the future. All right, thank you, Ben. And Chloe, you can go ahead. Um, yeah, I was going to say that, um, like, I see the work that's going on um, and involved uh, in on-campus organizing and, um, like, I want to make sure that execs are promoting and doing the good work that they do of advertising and keeping membership um, up to date. And um, I think that I'd be a really good fit for this position because I'm passionate about making sure that exec 
um, the execs and councils accessible to our membership and that, um, you know, uh, our execs are consistently promoting and advertising to keep our membership connected to the SFSS. Um, and then this is seen like through my participation um, in the student outreach working group, um, which Ben is, uh, is also on. So uh, I wouldn't feel too bad if he um, gets the spot on this committee either, because I know he uh, is also passionate about uh, making sure that, you know, the counselors and execs are doing the good work that they do. Awesome, thank you so much, Chloe. So I'm gonna open the floor if anyone would like to speak to any of the two candidates. I am actually going to list myself. I just wanna say as OCO chair, I'd be happy to have either Ben or Chloe on the, on the committee and knowing that there is going to be an open spot coming up in next week um, that hopefully if one, uh, the person who doesn't make it on the committee can then uh, two weeks, thank you, Ben, uh, can uh, can then join Ben. Um, and so I would love to have both Ben and Chloe on the committee. Uh, but I'll move on to Matt, um, who's listed themselves. Hi, yeah, I just want to speak in favor um, of Chloe. Um, I have really great privilege of having Chloe on external and community affairs. And they've um, shown nothing but like really good work and like, you know, just like showing up and providing like really good feedback and ideas around how they want to support. I think they would be really good. Um, I think this would be a really good fit, especially just kind of getting more involved in different sorts of committees and just giving them that experience. And yeah, so nothing but good things to say about Chloe. Great. Thank you so much, Matt. And we'll move on to next on the list, Almas. Oh, one sec. Okay. Maybe we can move, oh, uh, move on to Corbett and then come back to Almas. So Corbett, would you like to just go ahead? Yeah, thank you. Um, so i um, also like to, uh, say, um, sorry, it's been a weird day today. Uh, I'd like to uh, motivate for Chloe. Um, she uh, reached out to me a number of times on, uh, so related to the campaign she worked on and, and brought to council the motion she did. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been nice to work, really good to work with her. Um, as an aside, uh, we also have an open seat on governance committee. So, if someone else needs a seat, we can we can run a motion for that on the twenty fourth. Um, so, and there's also two other uh, subcommittees out of this out of Spock that I'll be getting open up soon. We'll have plenty of room because we have new councilors coming in. So, sorry, that's it. Awesome, and Almas, um, if you're ready to go. Yeah, sorry, I just had some issue with my internet. I don't know why. <laughs> Um, I think I would also like to motivate people to vote for Chloe because of all the reasons that they gave um, for sitting on this committee. Like they said, um, they're very committed to um, make a difference and not just for this board, but um, we need members on the committee who can be examples for the coming, um, I'm sorry, I uh, said board, but it has to be council. <laughs> um, but for the uh, other um council as well in the future because this is one of the first times that we have the OCEO um, that is fully functioning. We've had it in the past, but um, they've been almost that throughout the year. And this year I've been seeing that the committee is um, breaking in full force. And I think um, Chloe will do a great job on the committee. All right. Thank you so much, Almas. Uh, Shashank, Shashank, you Shank, are you here? Oh, Mike died. Um, if you want to type something, I can I can read it out. Uh, but we can move on um, to Jess. 
Yes, I would also like to vote my support for. Hello? Oh, oh, just sorry, sorry. joking. Go, 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 go. <laughs> I'll go Jess, why don't you finish and then we can go? Okay, I'll just. Go <laughs> <through>. <laughs> um, I would also like to vote my support for um, Chloe. Um, she and I have worked with each other in different capacities from tabling, from outreach, from promotions, um, all of that stuff. And she's looking to exec a lot for guidance and for support and for help. And I want to do the same where I can look to her and lean on her for support as well. If I'm making mistakes or anything like that, uh, I feel comfortable with that as well. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jess. Um, Shashank, you can go ahead. Uh, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I, I would just like to take this opportunity to uh, voice my support for Ben. Uh, I have worked really closely with him on the uh, accessibility course practices campaign. And even though Ben joined relatively late to all the other members on it, after he joined, the productivity increase, the efficiency increase, and the knowledge he brought to the table in all our meetings was way better, was something that the other uh, four of us had no clue about. So I feel like his knowledge and the way he handles information is top notch. While both of them do seem uh, perfect for this spot and both of them will eventually be in the spot, I'd just like to conclude by saying that I support Ben. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, just doing a last call um, for motivations or sorry, uh, or there. All right, seeing nothing, we're going to move to a vote. Um, on this and uh, Gabe is actually going to run it because he has a sheet and so I'll pass the chair off to Gabe for this vote. Thanks Devin and I just want to say I'm very excited because instead of having to manually tally the votes I have a spreadsheet so I'm very happy about that it'll do it for me anyway so I'm going to call on you uh, by your position and if you can please just uh, verbally state the name of the candidate you are going to vote for Ben or Chloe, and I'll record your vote. And we'll begin with archaeology. I vote for Chloe. Behavior, Bachelor of Environment. I vote for Chloe. Behavioral Neuroscience. Biology. Chloe. BPK. Chemistry. I vote Ben. Cognitive science, communications, criminology, um, data science, economics, oh, sorry, economics, Chloe. education, um, Chloe, education, uh, engineering science, English, Chloe, environmental science, I'm myself, <laughs> um, film, um, French, Chloe, BSWS, as chair of the committee, I'm going to abstain. Okay. Uh, geography. Health science is not here. History. History. Indigenous studies. Interactive arts and technology. Chloe. International studies. Chloe. Labor studies. Ben. I'm sorry? Uh, ben. Thank you. Linguistics. Math. Uh, I'll vote for myself. Megatronics. MBB. Megatronics. Oh, oh sorry. Megatronics. That's all good. Megatronics votes for Chloe. Thank you. I'm going too fast. <laughs> when I'm in the when I'm in the zone, I just go go. MBB. Chloe. Thank you. Operations research. Philosophy. Chloe. Physics, ben. political science, for Chloe, please. 
psychology. For Chloe. Science. Science. Zaid. Um, SAS. Chloe. Chloe, thank you, Sass. Uh, sociology and anthropology. Software systems. Ben. Statistics. Sustainable energy engineering. Uh, ben. Theater is not here. World literature is not here. FNSA. I did hear you, Mohammed. I recorded your vote. Um, international student advocates. If you're here yet, no. Um, Soka. Chloe, please. Thank you. Student Athlete Advisory Committee. Back. All right, moving into the executive committee. Uh, the president votes for Chloe, VP internal. VP internal. Sorry about that, uh, Chloe. VP finance. Chloe. VP UAA. Chloe. VP external. Chloe. VP events and student affairs. Chloe. Did anyone not have a chance to cast their vote? Did you get Jin's vote in the chat? Yes. Uh, okay, awesome, thanks. Okay, so uh, Madam Chair, uh, Ben received six votes and Chloe received 23. Awesome, okay, uh, so I think I have to amend this motion now to include Chloe as X. Just need to find me a motion. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna amend uh, to the be it resolved clause to be, be it resolved to appoint Chloe uh, to be to the Oversight Committee on Executive Officers. Can I get a seconder for that amendment? Political science. Thank you, Abby. And so moving into discussion on this amendment, is there any discussion on the amendment itself? Okay, seeing none, seeking unanimous consent on this amendment. Um, if you would like to abstain or um, vote against, Please uh, unmute yourself or raise your hand. All right, seeing none, uh, we'll move back. That passes, the amendment passes. We'll move back to the main motion, which reads, whereas there is one seat available for a non-executive counselor on the Oversight Committee on Executive Officers as a result of a recent resignation, be it resolved to appoint Chloe to the Oversight Committee on Executive Officers. And so last chance for discussion on this. Okay, seeing none, seeking unanimous consent. If you would like to uh, abstain or uh, would like to vote against, please raise your hand. All right, seeing none, it passes. Congrats, Chloe. And then we will have another vote to uh, have for OCO and hopefully Ben uh, for that one. And then I will also be graduated in uh, December, and so somebody else can also motivate in January. So there's plenty of opportunity to join OCO, um, but I will, um, Chloe, I'll start um, including you in the emails and hopefully you can get updated, but I'll add you for the, our next meeting. Um, awesome, and that it concludes new business. And so I think we all deserve a 10 minute break. Awesome, so come back at 6.36 um, to restart, um, grab some water and some food, and we'll move into our discussion items. All right, see you in a bit, guys.
Sue. All right, so we're gonna move into 10 discussion items and just start with 10.1, uh, report back on leave of absence policy, retroactive pay, and this was submitted by Corbett. And so Corbett, would you like to explain this item? You're uh, muted. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, this is a uh, requested from uh, council uh, at the last meeting related to after we passed the, the new leave of absence policy and people asked if we could do retroactive pay. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get a lot of full time enough time to look into this directly, uh, just because of the some of the new leave of absences and the fact that I'd be taking an acting president. So the last couple of days I've been working a lot on getting that that getting that in, in, in order so that the next two weeks are go well. Um, uh, so what I ultimately what I just need is to get uh, a list of all the different people I've gone on leave of absences before last week's motion um, so that the policy change so that I can contact them to see if they like to be paid or not and if, of, of, of how much. So I hope to have a more thorough report on the, by the 24th. Awesome. Thank you so much, Corbett, for that uh, report. Did anyone have any questions on uh, retroactive pay? This was an amendment made to last week's, it was last week's, um, motion regarding uh, pay, uh, being able to take 21 days of paid leave uh, for counselors and executives. And so I amended it to include the offer, uh, looking into the opportunity to have retroactive pay for those people who um, took leaves um, over the summer term or the beginning of this term, um, but also keep the option of uh, keeping the option of not having that paid so they could keep their 21 days for the future of this board term. Um, so does anyone have any further question regarding this? All right, seeing nothing. Thank you so much, Corbett, for looking into this. And Gabe is shamelessly going to eat his dinner on camera and <laughs> just to call you out. And so we could move on to 10.2 Spring Executive Committee elections and referenda questions. And this was also submitted by Corbett. And so, Corbett, you can go ahead. Sure. Um, okay. So I submit this um, because we, the next, now the AGM is finished, the next big operational or governance related thing. But now so this is our spring elections, uh, including the executive elections in early spring and the council elections in late spring, um, as well as referendums, referendum in early spring. And traditionally, we tend to do a lot of uh, referendums. We've done a number of referendums in spring related to fee changes, to um, bylaw changes, to uh, a number of other things. So uh, it's we actually have to, to because there's a good chance that um, the end of November 20th, 24th meeting might be our last council meeting based on our hope to not have to have a council meeting during middle finals in December. Um, we might, we'll have to do some, from a timeline perspective, we're going to have to call our election officially and, and referendum stuff officially. Um, but council and executive can pay, put on um, referendum questions um, for the spring. And so I wanted to first talk about that to get everyone's minds going towards uh, what some referendum questions could be put on. Um, on so, but there are already some that that have been. There's at least one, uh, two that have been um, committed to by council. They were done back at in uh, late summer when we had uh, student count, student care, and our health and dental plan um, report. Uh, related to, and they, they, we made a recommendation, like execs make a recommendation to council to commit to two referendums, one to increase the uh, health and dental plan fee by a certain amount, which we haven't just uh, fully set up yet, um, and two, to ask members to give us, to prove uh, giving council powers to adjust the um, the health and plan dental fee by plus or minus 5% to allow for things like adjustments and um, inflation, or, or if we want to like slowly um, use up some of our uh, surplus and stuff around uh, the health and plan, health and dental reserve fund. 
Um, so those are two things that we have to go forward with. We did pass the bylaw changes, um, so that's a so we don't have to necessarily try to do them again for a uh, spring by election. Sorry, spring referendum. Uh, but there could be uh, there's probably there's some things that I'll be I've brought this also this this topic to exec um, uh, to to talk about potential questions we can submit towards the membership for voting on uh, for fee changes or and or um, rule changes or something like that. So mostly I just wanted to give this as a heads up to people uh, to council maybe to go back to your members and ask about you know is there things that your members have been asking the SVS they wanted to change and bring them to, to me and bring them forward and we can discuss them and potentially add them if they're feasible uh, to a spring referendum. Awesome, thanks so much, Corbett. Did anyone have any thoughts on the spring referendum slash election? Any questions regarding how it works? Sorry, I just have some background noise. Give me one second to shut my door. My cat was being annoying because I left a door shut and every time there's a door shut, they just walk in and then walk out. It's like a dominance thing, I guess. <laughs> So any thoughts on referendum? Maybe Corbett, maybe give us an example of some other things that have gone through in the referendum so we have an idea. Yeah. Okay, sure, yeah. So um, we've had in the past changes to, uh, we've either created new funds. So for instance, the space expansion fund was done through a referendum. Um, the First Nation Student Association, so First Nation Student Fund was done through a referendum. Um, the reason why I'm talking about fees and stuff is because that's the only way we can actually change fees in the SFS uh, is through a referendum. It's, it's a requirement of the University Act. Um, so, you know, in AGM, we can't change fees. We, a board can't change, council can't change fees, things like that. So, um, so a number of our funds, almost like all our funds pretty much over the last 10, 15 years have been created through referendums. Um, the builds a few uh, fee exact, uh, was done through referendum, but we've also done changes to like, we've reworded uh, um, various funds or fees, uh, the, the way they can be used or not. Um, for instance, we, we, I think we modify like past uh, member, re past referendums put in changes to like, the way the the pay space expansion fund can be used. Um, there has been. Uh, I, I actually have a full. We actually have a full report uh, for up to the year twenty twenty, um, that starting from the start to from the start of the so that's all the twenty twenty. It goes in the whole different history of different fund requests or sorry different uh, referendum questions, um, and you can also change bylaws. Um, so if there's any additional, you know, typos or whatever else, if, or if we want to create a new bylaw, that can also be put in through as ref, through referendum as well. So um, it's it's not like, it, and you could even do policy changes and things like that. Um, but it's generally more for like fees and referendum. Oh, sorry, fees and uh, bylaw changes. Awesome, thank you so much. Did anyone have any ideas of anything they would want to bring as um, uh, want to bring to the referendum? Or any questions about what we can bring? Great, I am seeing nothing, but I assume if you think of anything, you can email Corbett. Yeah. <laughs> um, or was there anything that the current exec has thought about putting for the referendum? Um, we've had some like loose, uh, some loose discussions over the last while about uh, one thing I like, I think would be good um, is to have some start moving, sorry, how to say this, developing more dedicated funding for specific services or benefits in the society. So, Things like maybe creating a, a, a dedicated fund for student union and club grants and constituency groups grants and such and, and travel funds and all those kinds of things that are, that are currently covered under the our general fund. 
um, or having like a dedicated fee for, like we have a dedicated fee for FNSA. We have a dedicated, uh, we, we have a dedicated fee for the accessibility fund. We could create dedicated fees for our other constituency groups so that they have some base funding. Um, we could, and that could free, again, free up some room from the, the general fund to allow us to save more hiring and things like that. Um, you know, my perspective from a financial perspective is that um, any major fund or service, sorry, major group or service should probably have a dedicated fee to fund that just to make sure it always has, it, it, can't, it won't be, um, it'll be stable from a financial perspective. But I understand we're still in the pandemic and stuff, and I still understand students would feel uncomfortable having their fees go up with including tuition and such. But from a long-term perspective, it would help the society quite a bit to have some more, so, some more um, dedicated uh, funds and such. That makes, that makes sense. Um, the, I had a question, the COVID um, relief fund that we had, if we wanted to continue that, would that have to be part of the referendum or is it because it's already in place? Um, so the, the COVID-19 funding thing that was, um, we used, we carried over um, surplus basically. Well, we always carry over surplus, but we did it, we earmarked some specific for surplus to be on the next year's budget. Um, we could continue to do that if we have surplus to do so, but if you wanted to have some say more dedicated bursary support or, or award support, or if we want to flesh out our bursary awards and scholarship systems, um, we could ask for a specific fee for that type of thing. For say every student uh, contributes say three dollars um, a term a for full time dollar fifty for part time. Uh, that would generate around just under two hundred thousand dollars, I believe, a year. And so that could be used as a pool for bursary for small some small scale bursaries or um, scholarships awards or whatnot. So there's there's a lot of options. It's just a matter of do students want to do it? Uh, but, you know, you, you won't know until you ask, right? As long as it isn't like some really massive fee that looks really like, there's always the natural politics of it, but really what I've noticed from history of uh, referendums, looking through all our different referendums, is that the more targeted uh, or the more dedicated funding comes from or for, it tends to be more successful and, and begin past because students can see, oh, it's a, a dollar here or two dollars there to benefit this group or this this cause or this situation versus a, a general like, hey, can we increase the the general membership fee by two to three dollars? It tends to rarely pass because it's kind of like the general idea of raising your taxes, even though it's not the same thing. It just has that same feel. That makes sense. Thank you very much. So is kind of action items on this then going back to our DSUs, constituency groups, and asking what they would like to see on a referendum or other students we have connections to? Yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's uh, like, I, I, I think it's really important for a council and being that you all are represent, uh, representing different groups in campus, all student unions, constituency groups, and um, affiliate student groups to go to your members and and say like think about like seriously think about um, changes that you think would be helpful for your your members or your your students or or whatnot. So, um, and it, again, it doesn't have to be necessarily fees. It could be uh, causes, it could be policies, it could be bylaws, things like that. Awesome. Like, oh, sorry, I just want to jump yeah. in. Like like for instance, say we wanted to have a Surrey student union building. And that would be like a five to 10 year process, but maybe we want to pitch some kind of basic fee to start saving up money for it now, you know, or or some kind of, or maybe even just a motion saying, hey, we, we want this project to exist. So it goes to referendum. And then we, as council then have, like students say, we want this whole, this project to exist. Uh, and so council then is tasked with actually in, implementing it. So there's, there's, there's a lot of potential ways to go about this. Awesome, thank you so much. Does anyone else have any other questions before we move on? Any final thoughts before I read like so many notice of motions to you? Oh, well. Corbett, do you have a, sorry. Oh no, not so much about this, but the next 
discussion item is a new one added, remember? Oh yes, sorry, you did add a new discussion item and I completely forgot. Sorry about that. Um, Alrighty. Uh, moving on then from this discussion item, because um, there's seen no further discussion, to 10.3 SSS in-person COVID-19 guidelines. So this was also submitted by Corvette, so you can go ahead and explain this one. Yeah, thank you. So um, I actually had planned to have like a full motion made, and I actually have made up a motion for this, but um, I'll, I'll explain why I, I didn't just post it now. Um, so um, as many of you probably know, maybe you've heard from students, you know, our guidelines for in-person events on SF on campuses uh, on campus um, is restricted to only 25 people max. Um, and that's been uh, going back in our, our motion stuff that was approved or that that yeah, that that initial restriction was approved back in the middle of July in the lead up to the sub opening. Um, and the guidelines have been um, and, and council tasked exec and the member services um, coordinators to work on those guidelines. Since then, the sub has been open for a couple months now. Um, we have had uh, a few updates to the, the provincial health orders, um, and we have uh, updated our guidelines uh, in some of our guidelines in that regard, like for instance, needing checking, needing masks and all those kinds of stuff. Um, however, we've, um, we've been, uh, students have asked, start asking us if, at the very least, if these restrictions can be loosened when it comes to um, space that is on campus, but not controlled by the SFS. So SFU space or some other third party space. Um, and being that our off-campus um, uh, guidelines, sorry, our guidelines for in-person events off-campus is is not as restricted. Is not restrictive. It's basically follow the, the venue has to follow the PHOs, and there's some things that you have to do as uh, organizers to like make sure you do the checklists and things like that. Um, uh, exec, we, we've been formally um, talked back and forth because we haven't had a meeting yet on it officially. Uh, but we're generally in favor. We think it's, it makes sense to to allow our members to, um, when they're say they're having an SFU room, uh, like that they booked an SFU space, if, if the space allows for for more than fifty people um, and is followed and all follows in the PHO, then that we should allow we we should loosen those guidelines to respect that. Um, and also, I wanted to also bring this discussion up because you know it's taken a while for us to get the booking system in house internally in the sub open, and and that some of our restrictions, um, the twenty five member person is partially because some of our rooms aren't that big and they can't really hold more than that. Um, but also, we've had some kind of operational constraints. Um, you know, the building is still relatively new. We still have a lot of staff that have been working, and but we're still kind of working out of the MBC versus working on the sub has been a, quite different. And so, and the idea of like how we thought the booking system would work um, operationally uh, was we developed it originally when we still only had the MBC space. Um, and so it's well, what staff have found is uh, when working in the actual space in the sub, there is differences. And so that needed to be, uh, those, those needs and those changes need to be given to a third party developer um, who is developing the, the tool uh, for, for so that people so students can just easily book um, uh, these rooms online and, and through the portal as opposed to having to like fill out, out paperwork and go to physically go to the sub and stuff to do it. Um, so I kind of just wanted to explain you know why some of the PO some of our guidelines are currently the way they are they need to be a bit updated um, and uh, that 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 in fact, we as a council can actually do a new motion to, to task exec to update this and, and exec and staff. Um, but I just kind of wanted to update people about this. Um, additionally, COVID numbers have been slowly starting to trend down over the last week or so, finally. I hope they still generally start trending down, continue to trend down, but we're, so we're down around numbers that we were having around last August, middle of August. Um, so got a way to go before those numbers get really nice and low, but. Um, we're kind of in the good, we're, we're in a good um, direction right now for the province. Um, so uh, before I go to submitting a motion, I just wanted to have, see if there's any people that had any questions. 
or just general questions about this. Yeah, thanks, Corbett. I think Abby has a question. More so a comment than a question. Um, I'm in agreement with you, Corbett. I think it's it's a good idea that at least off of SFSS spaces, um, for SFU spaces, it's better that I think we follow provincial guidelines just because there's a reason provincial guidelines exist. It's for everyone. Um, if the SFSS wants to create maybe more of a space or uh, safer space for um, immunocompromised people, I think that's okay. But then we have the sub for that. We have other SFSS spaces. So if uh, events want to, or events, if clubs want to hold bigger events, I think it's good to give them that option provided they follow all the appropriate um, safety protocols on SFU territory. All right, thanks so much, Abby. Uh, Gabe, you've listed yourself. Thank you, Devin. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, voice my support um, for loosening our restrictions. I think, as Corbett mentioned, uh, the restrictions in the in-person event guidelines were made at a time where there was a lot of uneasiness around where COVID was headed. It was, it was, the numbers were still incredibly high. We didn't know what the return to campus was going to look like. And so we were really, really cautious with the approach that we were taking uh, for events. Now that we, um, now that we have, you know, the BC vaccine card implemented that system, we know that for certain, you know, uh, uh, events with a certain number of people, you need to have proof of vaccination. That'll make our event safer. Um, and overall, we just know generally now how to hold safe events um, to keep our members safe and keep our clubs, student unions, and constituency group members safe. Um, I will say, though, that I think Heading in this direction, we need to put out some pretty strong communication and messaging around how to have safe events and really provide as much support to student groups as possible to make sure that um, these events don't get out of hand. Not to suggest that they will, but there is potential um, for events to get out of hand. I mean, I, I, you, you know, you see all those videos on social media about like, at other schools of like massive parties and stuff like that. And I know we don't want to see that here. Um, I don't think it will happen here, but you know, it just, just, I, I think it's important to, you know, as much as we're all sick of messaging around COVID, we do um, have an obligation to kind of share that messaging and ensure that we can have safe events. But overall, I'm in favor of loosening the restrictions and um, allowing for larger events. Awesome, thank you so much. Does anyone else want to list themselves regarding this topic? All right, seeing nothing. Uh, Corbett, this is, um, gonna... oh, sorry, Corbett, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to um, then be in that discussion since we finished, I'd like to move, a, amend, move to amend the agenda to add a motion. Um, I'll have to, do it in a couple of batches, but I'll just call it a uh, title will be um, COVID-19 in-person guidelines. Um, and then, so, yeah, COVID-19 in-person guidelines amendments. And then I'll just post it, paste the message, the motion in the chats. There's a couple, a lot of whereas clauses just to give hype uh, background. So apologize, apologies, everyone. All right, everyone, I'm just copy pasting this all onto a document because I'll have to read it later. Um, do, do, do. Alrighty, so Corbett, are you moving to amend the agenda with this motion, which I'll read after? 
I am. Okay, can I get a seconder, please? Political science. All right, thanks, Abby. And I will read the motion as follows and bear with me because I haven't read it before. Um, it is titled COVID in-person event guidelines amendments and it reads, Whereas the SFSS has developed COVID-19 guidelines for in-person events since before and after the sub has been open to the public, whereas PHO, PHO orders have been updated multiple times since our guidelines were first created, whereas current guidelines restrict all SFSS in-person events to a maximum of 25 people for any on-campus events, regardless of its space used was controlled by the SFSS or not, whereas off-campus events do not have similar constraints, whereas the restriction of, uh, for SFSS controlled spaces is partly related to operational constraints and will change if those constraints loosen, whereas this restriction for non-SFSS controlled spaces on campus is out of date and creates unnecessary barrier and burden on our members having to book off campus venues, which are more expensive, be it resolved that council amends the, and mandates the executives alongside uh, MSC staff to execute the SFSS in-person event guidelines and application replacing on-campus events are limited to a maximum of 25 people, including execs and attendees, regardless of the limits imposed by the PHO orders or SFU policies, and replacing that with on-campus events are limited to a maximum of 25 people, um, including executives um, and attendees on SFSS controlled spaces, and for SFU controlled spaces, events are limited to a maximum as determined by the current PHO orders or SFU policy, whichever imposes a lesser maximum. The maximum established by PHO orders as to date is 50 persons or 50% capacity, whichever is larger, as well as uh, subsidiary changes in line with this. Uh, be, it resolve, be it further resolved that council directs the exec along with MSC staff to review and make changes to uh, the in-person booking guidelines in relation to the student union building bookings in a timely manner that centers the ability for students to safely gather and in line with BC provincial health orders with additional safety mechanisms such as social distancing, masks indoors, contact tracing, and enforced vaccination checks for gatherings. Alrighty. So um, that has been, the agenda has been moved um, and seconded to add that to the agenda. So seeking unanimous consent to amend the agenda to have this item I just read on it. Seeking unanimous consent, if you would like to um, abstain or vote against, please write your heads. Where are we adding this? Uh, I guess we'll add it under new business. So I guess it will become, if that's possible, it will become 9.4 um, of new business. We're just going to backtrack. Um, and so seeking unanimous consent. All right, seeing none, this is added to the agenda. And so now we will move to passing the motion. And so uh, I really don't want to read that again. I hope you all can read it and uh, see it. Um, so discussion on the, oh, so can I get a mover for this motion? Corbett, would you like to move? Yes, I would like to move. Thank you. Cool. Can I get a seconder, please? Math will second. Thank you, Math. Um, already, discussion on this topic. Is there any? No discussion? All righty. So, um, I'll just quickly go over the whereas clauses again. So, uh, uh, oh, sorry, be it resolved uh, clauses again. So the first one, be it resolved that council amend and mandates the executive alongside MSC staff to execute, uh, to execute on the SFS in-person event guidelines application, replacing the first with the second. And then it also be further resolved that council directs the executive along with MCS staff to review and make changes to the in-person booking guidelines in relation to the student union building uh, bookings in a timely manner that centers ability for student groups to gather in a safely manner and in line with PHO orders with additional safety mechanisms such as social distancing, masking indoors, contact tracing, and enforcing vaccination checks for gatherings. All right, seeking unanimous consent, if you would like to abstain or vote against, please raise your hand. Okay, seeing none, this passes, whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, and 
that is the end of new business that we've done discussions already. Um, and so we are going to move into notice of motions and there's quite a lot of them. So I'm going to ask that you bear with me um, with all of this reading. Um, and so we're going to move to 11 notice of motion. This first one is 11.1 .1, and it is student governance policy change in SFSS member services and group policies. And this was submitted by Corbett and it reads, where is in October 26, 2020 and October 27, 2021, members of the SFSS gen, uh, annual general meetings passed bylaw changes that set based democratic government's requirements for non-executive council seats. Whereas the base requirements are that council representatives position be elected, open to their members, and it have at least one week notice that was given to their members. Whereas the SFSS encouraged all council uh, member groups to have open democratic governance, whereas it'd be good to provide base uh, democratic requirements for all council member groups in line with our bylaws. So be it resolved that council approves the policy change recommended in the document BN based democratic governance requirements, which I assume we will get with the next um, agenda. And so then we have 11.2, addition of sexual misconduct training to the SFSS orientation and retention policies. This was also submitted by Corbett, and it reads, whereas on October 13th, 2021, Council approved Council 2021-11-10-07, require uh, in clubs and student union executives, constituency groups, counselors, and society staff to take mandatory sexual violence prevention and responding to disclosure training, whereas one step in developing this training is to amend relevant policies to reflect this new requirement to so the resolve clauses that council approved the following policy changes, OPT 1.2.K, ensure new employees are trained in sexual violence and disclosure training, and OTP 2.2.G, sexual violence prevention and disclosure uh, support training. And then 11.3, which is a policy change, uh, and it reads, whereas past council policies included a reduction in expected hours with a reduction in stipend for the last month of each term to accommodate final exams and projects for council members, whereas these poli uh, policies were removed by from the policy manual in 2015, along with expected hours, whereas in 2020, the board of directors brought back policies around expected work hours for executives and board members, be it resolved that council adopt the following policy changes. I'm not going to read them because they're quite long, but basically, um, sorry, uh, uh, Gabe, yes, what's your clarifying question? I just saw that, sorry. Oh, it's, it's all right. It was for 11.1. It just mentions... Um, uh, a document and it wasn't sent out with the council agenda today. Corbett, I'm assuming that that it will get sent out eventually. Yeah, my apologies. I will have that out probably by the end of the meeting. I think I think just tracked down. I thought I included it or attached it in my submission, but I don't think I did. Very cool, no worries. All right, thanks so much. And so basically 11.3 is the replacement that during exam months on um, the end of each term, um, each both exec and council would work um, half hours. Um, and so you can read that there. And that's the end of our notice of motion. So next week is gonna be a busy meeting <laughs> or not two weeks from now, is gonna be a busy meeting. Um, and so we have the 30 minute Q and A. Was there any students here that wanted to ask a question about anything? I didn't think I saw anyone, but thought I would double check. Okay, seeing nothing, we move on to announcements and there's a number of leave of absences. Firstly, uh, the communication counselor is taking leave of absence for November 1st, December 22nd on personal mental health leave, um, as well as the health science counselor for November 1st, to November 12th, also on per personal mental health leave. Then we have the president. So Gabe is going on leave from November 11th to 23rd. And I believe Corbett will be acting president. So direct questions to Corbett. Um, the VP equity and sustainability is on leave from November 8th to 13th on personal health leave. There's a leave of absence for VP external and community affairs from November 9th uh, to the 22nd, also on personal uh, health leave. And then I'm going to take a leave from November, November 25th to 30th, as I have uh, impending immigration forms. Um, All righty. And so we are finally at adjournment. And we did beat last week's record, but we did all we did finish before 8:30, so I'm going to take it as a win. Um, apparently, none of the uh, meetings that Gabe gets to share uh, will be the short ones. <laughs> 
Uh, so be it resolved to adjourn the meeting um, at 7.13. And so can I get a mover for that, please? Math moves. Thank you, Math. Can I get a seconder? Gabe. Thank you, Gabe. All right, so that carries. Um, and we are done. Thank you guys for coming tonight. I hope you have a good day off tomorrow and are able to have a good day of reflection and all of that. Um, yeah, um, I'll send out the resources that I put together that apparently will not paste um, by email. So you'll see those shortly. But have a great night, everyone. Thanks for coming.